I flick the light switch in time to see a pair of grey eyes, clean and true, appear from behind an overturned bookcase. The dame follow close behind. Friends call me Sherry, she breathed. Sherry Lamore. She was dressed in black, as if for a funeral, but the way she walked would have made a corpse sing. The guy with her wouldn't. You come at an opportune time, Mr. Cross, he said. Who the hell told you my name? Newport is a very small place. For a man of enterprise, there are ways and means. Teeth flashed from behind his red beard, each hair of which bristled like a porcupine in heat. He gave a slight bow. And to put us on an equal footing, Adrian Todd. I noticed the dame, Sherry Lamore. She was moving away from Todd, and I wondered why. She caught my gaze, and her expression turned wary. It made for quite an interesting tableau, the three of us immobile, each regarding the other with varying degrees of suspicion. Adrian Todd looked amused. I pointed my gun at him. I don't trust you, pal. You're right not to trust him. Should I trust you? I love the way a limey dame talks. It sends a regiment of goosebumps dancing along my spine like a Fourth of July parade. And then there were the eyes. So what are you doing here, Miss Lamore? I asked, noticing for the first time that someone had already removed the corpse of Anthony Fellows. I don't know. I don't even know why I'm in Newport. You don't know a lot, do you?